Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. I'm going to give you some big updates, not only what's going on with these storms now, but still what's going on as soon as we go into February. Things are looking bigger and stronger as we go through that transition. So if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I'm all year long. Timestamps are in the description to help save you time. Make sure you click the bell so you do get updates. I'm trying to talk about these weather patterns early so people can prepare for them. Now these storms are still coming through the south today, bringing chances for tornadoes and it did raise a little bit northern like I told you yesterday. And as that goes towards the northeast, still gonna bring some storms and a little bit of snow is coming with this next one. As we go through Friday, it's gonna be a transition, some storms along the south, right along the Gulf Coast. So far, there's no severe weather out for that, but I'm gonna show you what I have found. I think there's still chances, maybe for hail. I think there's a chances for a little spin up or two. And then as you go through Saturday, it's all gonna congeal again and that's where we got that severe weather as that goes up towards northeast bringing y'all that snowstorm as well then the storms are going to start coming down the west coast you're going to get hit in washington and oregon first and this is slowly going to drift down to the south across arizona and new mexico and then transition our february cold air a lot of snow and a lot of big storms potentially all forming at one time and you can see our setup from here we still got all these storms coming with that troughing bringing all them storms to the U.S. on the lower 48. And we still got this big storm in the Pacific where we have all this favorable environment like I showed y'all. If you've never seen it before, go to the right corner of the screen and you'll see a white box. Click on that and it explains all the data so you know what is coming in as we go through this transition. This is going to bring these whips of storms towards the northwest for the next couple of days, but it's going to come deeper and deeper. And as it does that, it's going to bring storms all down the west coast. A big high alert for flooding. And you can see just how we're doing for this morning. So you got the winter weather advisory for Alaska, blizzard warnings, also the heavy freezing rain spray. Just be aware of that. Now in the south, you got all this flooding, plus it's moving towards West Virginia, a little bit towards the northeast. You'll see it will grow a little bit. And you got the flash flood warning. They did go into a flash flood emergency in Louisiana yesterday. Now we got all this dense fog advisory, and this is going to last for a few days. So what this is, is you have all this snowpack, all the snow on the ground, and you got all this warm moisture, all this warm air coming up from the Gulf from this transition from this troughing. And this is bringing warm air over the snowpack because warm air rises, it's going to push to the north, and there's not a lot of wind. So when that happens, you get all this dense fog advisories going on a lot of fog and look as you go through today it's going to grow a little bit worse in a lot of these states a lot thicker so be careful traveling out there plus you can see for tomorrow it's going to go down and come right back again as we get that transition of this warm air aloft coming over that snowpack and bring you a lot of dense fog over here towards the northeast getting strong and over here towards wisconsin and illinois getting strong this is for tomorrow and you see it does carry into Saturday as well. It's going to be a few days of a lot of fog. Now, yesterday, there was a lot of flooding. We had over 25 flood reports, 90 flash flood reports. Over here in the Northeast, we had 34 freezing rain reports and almost 200 snow reports. But we also had landslide reports over here for California and over here for West Virginia and Northern West Virginia landslide reports and it's worse this was a very bad flooding also what's been happening for california but they got more coming and you can see here on the precipitation map the last 24 hours let me turn it down where you can see a little bit better where this is all happening so all the way from texas going towards louisiana bringing all that red all that red is three to four almost five inches the purple gets towards six inches of rainfall that came down just in the last 24 hours towards northern Louisiana going towards southern Arkansas. And this is going to be even more. There's more rainfall coming. Another one to three inches expected right in this region for today. Plus more is coming next week. So there is a mesoscale discussion out for Louisiana, Mississippi going into northern Alabama as well for a chance for one to three inches additional on top of what you already have. So for today, you do have a lot of strong dew points moving in high 60s, even getting the 70s as that pushes further through the east as you go through the evening 
and then goes over the southeast for tomorrow as well. And your cape, your lift is getting very strong for today. As you go through the afternoon, it raises all the way up into Alabama, into Georgia, and you see how that flares up all afternoon long, and then it miles down. That's a lot of food, a lot of energy for these storms to keep growing. Now, when you check your significant tornado perimeters, which factors in dew points, wind shear, a lot of different factors into it for your best chance to get tornadoes, you can see as you go through this morning for Louisiana, going through southern Mississippi, and going on that angle through central and northern Alabama and northern Georgia through the afternoon. That is your best chances to get tornadoes right along that line. So you can see that your storms push that way, and you're still getting those cells right in front of it, all evening long as you go through the afternoon then it starts popping up for northern alabama as well you get these cells right in front of this front as that pushes to the east and then in the afternoon look at that they get in front of northern georgia as well as all that goes to the east and that is your best chances to get spin-ups is out of those cells and that's showing your strongest chances your best atmosphere to maybe get a tornado but you also can see when you look at your updraft helicity that it is leaving trails of chances for medium to large hail for Louisiana and all these trails as these storms go all evening long through Mississippi. Sky goes northern more and more to the north. So definitely northern Mississippi, northern Alabama. Y'all got some strong signatures. They get some medium to large size hail and northern Louisiana, northeastern. Now for today, you see the tornado threat has ramped up a little further to the north, just like we was talking about yesterday. So here's your decision states at risk for the tornado threat for today. And I can see it going right on that northern angle. Maybe even going into northern Georgia might even put you all in a threat. So far, National Weather Service has as a few strong and to severe thunderstorms are possible across parts of the southeast for today. But you do see here, it does say that where you go into the afternoon, where the instability, the cape is the strongest may pose a local risk for strong damage and wind gusts and possibly a tornado or two. And so far, all I can pick up is maybe get some 40 miles per hour wind gusts. You get little pockets of 50 once you get to that yellow as that goes on that northern track. But you get a little bit towards uh, western North Carolina as well, the higher elevations over here. Another thing to note, when we look at the latest run on NATO cast, it is showing the chances for tornadoes for today, but it is showing you got a stronger chance in northern Alabama, right where we're seeing those very powerful cells moving through. So be aware of that. Now, so far for tomorrow, they have it as thunderstorms. National Weather Service says as scattered thunderstorms will likely develop across parts of the southern plains, southeast and mid-Atlantic from Friday into Friday night. No severe threat is expected. But then on Saturday, then we're going to get that storm system forming up in the south, bringing that severe weather threat to the south, and it's going to go up to the northeast and still bring that snowfall for you guys over there. Still showing you'll have thunderstorms and all of this green, but for your severe weather, here's your cities and states at risk, with the biggest risk being in this 15%. National Weather Service has scattered thunderstorms, some with isolated severe wind gusts, will be possible in parts of the Carolinas on Saturday. And you could get a line segment pass through where you could get wind damage be possible in the leading edge in this line. So just be careful of that. I will keep you updated. But mainly during the mid to late afternoon. Plus the flooding, because there's more flooding to come and then more flooding on top of that. So you can see what National Weather Service model that if you go 24 hours, it's going to get heavy. But once you go all the way for the next 48, almost next three days, it starts adding up on that West Coast. That's going to keep going down. But look at all this heavy rainfall that's adding up for here as well. More flooding coming your way. Now this is bringing two inches of heavy rainfall all along the coast of Washington, Oregon, even going to Northern California next three days. It will go down further as we go into the coming days after that. Your snowfall is not adding up to a lot at that time just yet. But this is bringing another inch of rainfall all the way towards Ohio Valley, Missouri, Oklahoma. But look over here for the southeast. This is bringing a lot of heavy precipitation all the way for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, northern Georgia, upstate South Carolina, and western North Carolina. Upstate South Carolina and northern Georgia getting the heaviest potential and going into Alabama. Look at this. This is a big three plus inches right here. And you can see with the euro now is picking up closer as we go into that transition from the 31st of January right into February. <laughs> it's going to bring all that heavy precipitation all down the west coast with the atmospheric river. And it's going to come across the south bringing potential snow. Now this is the end of the run with the euro. So you can't see the, the impacts just yet with the euro but you can get that hint 
of all that heavy snowfall that's starting to come in that direction. And this is going to continue on that southern jet and go across the southeast. If you didn't hear about the pattern that we're going into, you need to watch yesterday's video. We have multiple outlooks from the 27th through the 31st, just within those few days. You got hazardous cold moving through Alaska. You also got heavy precipitation and you got high winds. Be aware of that. Plus, you have a lot of flooding likely in all this purple. I'm going to zoom in so you can see your towns. You know about the severe weather. I already went through that. Also, some flooding. Heavy flooding coming from northern Georgia, western North Carolina, upstate South Carolina, going into Virginia. And you can see we got the heavy rain starting for the west coast, for the coast of Washington, from the 27th, 30th, and 31st, going from Oregon to California, then southern California for the 31st. And this is going to transition through Arizona and New Mexico, plus the heavy precipitation and higher elevations. This is going to be snowpack. But just the first outlook from the 27th through the 31st, you know about severe weather, but look at the flooding likely all the way through Houston and going towards the eastern side of the DFW. Also going into Louisiana, southern Arkansas, all of Louisiana, going to be more flooding. Going to Mississippi as well for the western side of Mississippi, including Jackson and going all the way north, northern Alabama towards Huntsville and getting some of Tennessee as well but then you got the flooding the heavy rain from northern georgia going into western north carolina you see you got Asheville, you got upstate south carolina greenville been there and it goes into virginia so there's a lot of flooding that will pursue out of this after this transition also for the west coast so when you take a look you can see it's going right down california from oregon all the way past San sacramento and you can see over here all the way towards santa maria a lot of flooding coming your way and the heavy snow now you can see the update on our transition we still got them storms coming all the way into the gulf of mexico and that's going to carry to the east bringing you below average temperatures as well while we're in this above average bubble but that above average bubble is going to burst after we go into February, then we're going to get that below average coming in, still bringing that cold air as we go through February. So remember, if you didn't see yesterday's video, you need to go watch what temperatures you're coming into. And I will keep you updated. I'm just trying to keep this one as short as possible. Updating all these storms is hard to keep this video below 20 minutes. That's just crazy. So you can see right here with the ensemble control member of the Ural, after you get that snowstorm in the Northeast, we're going to that transition where you're going to get storms on the west coast, still bringing that atmospheric flooding all the way down California. As you're going to begin of February, still building up in the Gulf. And look at this, forming up another potential storm in the northeast, big storm in the Gulf, while another storm coming along the west coast. That is crazy. I bet you thought that thumbnail was made up from three multiple shots. It was not. This is an ensemble control member with the Euro. Your more than likely outcome, February, the first week of February, with all that favorable environment I've been showing y'all, looks very concerning, and we need to stay on top of this. Still showing that the favorable environment is going to get stronger and stronger as we go through February. These storms are going to get stronger and stronger. But we can't just stop there because we got warnings for that as well. So now we got warnings for February 1st through February 7th. More heavy precipitation coming in this green. More flooding expected. More flooding expected coming on for Arizona and California with all this heavy precipitation from the 1st through the 5th. Plus all that heavy snowpack still coming on for California, Utah, Nevada, Arizona going into New Mexico. And the high winds has expanded even more. So here's an update on the heavy snow. So you have got slight risk and all this purple moving all the way towards the central plains now, all the way towards the four corners. You got the moderate risk for heavy snow and all this dotted pink and the high risk, the very heavy snow going for higher elevations of California going into Nevada. Still showing it is bringing a lot of snow with this. I will keep you updated after we deal with this weak nor'easter, this snowstorm in the northeast. I'm going to talk more about this transition. Just remember who told you first. <laughs> Plus, we still got that cold air that's coming down from now through the end and the beginning of February. So you need to go see what temperatures are coming. I will update you. And the wind risk. You can see not only for the moderate that has stretched all the way out, the slight risk has stretched all the way out towards the south central as well, including Alaska. This is growing. 
and your flood risk, not just for the high flood risk and the moderate that's stretching all the way to New Mexico, and not only the, the more flood risk that's going to come again for the Deep South, look at this big slight risk that's going to spread all the way across. A slight chance, now this is for heavy precipitation. This could be turning into some snow. If you remember last year when I, I bought a hundred of these weather stations, it was a different model than this. It was a little more expensive model. And I, let, I gave them away within six month period of time to all of you. And I said, they'll be back. The generators, I will be giving those away again. There's not just yet, but I've been talking with this company and they want me to give away their weather stations as well. They want to sponsor us. So I've been talking with them about this. So this probably will be coming back very soon. I don't want to give you a definite until it is definite. Plus, look at this down here. You're getting more freezing rain and snow in the northeast as well, but you're really getting all this bad winds passing through, and that looks like that's bringing some damaging winds with that, so you definitely got to be aware of this storm passing through. 40 miles per hour on that. We're getting 40 miles per hour wind gusts passing through, even 41. Just be aware, and you got strong thunderstorms as well. 60 miles per hour and one inch hail. You have a lot going on in the south. Just be aware that there's a lot of dangerous weather coming up, y'all. And this is going to continue to push to the east. This is going to continue to push to the east and northern like this. Just be aware of that. So all this you see here is going to start coming your way as well. Thank you for your time, everybody. I will keep you updated. Be careful with all these flooding going on and the chances for these storms to strengthen to some potential tornadoes. It's looking very strong, especially for northern Alabama going into Georgia. Be careful, please. Now, before you go today, Hebrews 11, 3 through 10. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place, which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with, with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. I always wish the best for every single one of you and your families. And remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always keeps you safe, you and your families, and forever. And never lose faith. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Have a great day and be safe, everybody.